Hello guys. In this video, we will be build JavaScript array methods as a function from JavaScript basics. As it is great and simple way to refine your JavaScript programming skill and make your fundamentals strong as beginner. And you'll also know various JavaScript array methods along the way. We will start from easiest to more complex ones. And I have tried to keep it as beginner friendly as possible. As for how this video will proceed. First I will be introducing the array method with their example input and output. Then we will examine those methods, identifying which programming tools and tricks to use and in which order to arrange them. Along that process we will build pseudocode algorithm for required function and later on, I will show you flowchart version of that algorithm. Then we will code it up with JavaScript. The important tip that I can give to you all, to get most out of this video, is to first try to build it by yourself then come to this video. So let's start with simple one, array.isArray method. The array.isArray method is static method determines whether the past value is an array. So, how will we find if, given argument passed to function is of type array? Well, remember whenever you are stuck with problem like this, it is always helpful to go back to basics. Let's start with question. What is argument passed to function? Can it give any information about itself? And the answer is yes. Remember that almost everything in the language is an object including arrays and functions or gets treated as an object. Objects are a fundamental part of JavaScript. Even primitive data types like strings and numbers can be special temporary objects that provide extra functionality. If you dig into this object, you can find one useful property called constructor which stores data type of data and can be utilized for our purpose. So let's start working on pseudocode. First we need to initialize function. Let call it isArray. Inside function write if statement to check if argument.constructor is equal to array and return the result. But now there is an edge case to take care of. What if argument passed down is null or undefined? We still have to pass false in that case. So to update our code we need to check if argument is null or undefined and return false if yes. Here is flowchart representation of our algorithm. Now it's time to turn our algorithm into JavaScript code. First, we initialize our function and call it isArray. Then, check if argument is null or undefined. If true, return false. Finally, check if argument.constructor is equal to array. If true, return true and vice versa. Now that we have finished building our first array method, it's time to move to next one, which is array's length method. Well, actually, it is an array property, but for learning's sake, we will make function which behaves similar to it. As its name suggests, it gives number of elements in particular array, so the function that we will be building have to return value, which represent elements number. Hmm, so at the end, function will be returning value, or variable containing value which represents number of elements. Thinking like that, we will be needing variable which keeps track of number of elements. And that first it should be of value zero. Let name it count. But how we will count elements? We need something which goes through each element and increment count variable by one. So loop sounds perfect for it. But how can we use loop if we don't know length of the array? For this we can use for of loop which loops through the values of an iterable object. And its syntax looks like this. Now, we have all essential parts to make a proper algorithm. First, initialize function. Let's name it length. Then, initialize variable name count with value 0. Next, implement a for of loop in which increment count variable by 1 in each iteration. And finally, return count variable. But what if argument passed to function is not array but other data type? To deal with this edge case, we have to check if argument is an array in the first place. Now, I will encourage you all to think, how can we check if given argument is an array? Pause and ponder. Well, for this we can use isArray method which we have built earlier. 
Now, modifying the code. Check if argument is an array. If not, then throw an error. Here is the flowchart representation of the algorithm. Now let's code it up with JavaScript. Initialize a function with name length. Then, check if argument is array. If not, then throw an error. Next, initialize a variable name count with value 0. Finally, for the last part, implement for in loop in which increment count variable by 1 in each iteration and return count variable. Well, that's all for today. I hope this video was useful for you and thank you for watching.